Hi, this is Michael or Miguel on Board Game Geek, and today I want to well, try something new, and that is give you a walkthrough of a game that I picked up in Essen. Walkthrough meaning that I will show you how the game is played in a two-player game. I will play one player normally, so you can see all decisions that I'm making, and the other player I'll do just some actions. Um, this is kind of an experiment, it's the first time I've done this, and it's also an experiment to see whether I can do this just with a smartphone, or whether this gets too shaky. And yeah, the game I want to try this with is Cobalt by Andrew Parks, published by Stronghold Games. Uh, lots of people have said that the box art reminds them of the video game, the PC game Homeworld, and yeah, I have to agree, it's really great. Um, Let's just take a small look at the back of the box. Yeah, 10 plus as a age, 2 to 5 players, a 60, 60 to 120 minutes. Okay, so I'll set up the game and then we can start. So, I've set up a two player game. Each player has their player board, which gives an overview over the different phases of the round and also for the different actions within the action phase. Talking about actions, this is a way to track them. Each player starts with four actions, but you get more and further rounds in the game. And also there's an energy marker and an energy track to track how much energy you have, but you start with zero. zero. Also, each player received a starting world, which is placed into their war zone, this area down here, which is yeah, basically your tableau. Also, a starting deck, and this player is the starting player, so he got the starting marker. And over here we have the second player, which has basically the same things to start with. And talking about things to start with, the decks are identical, except for one hero, which is unique for each faction. Then over here we have the different sectors in the game. So we start with the barbaric worlds, basically a sector on the rim of the galaxy, and we advance over ten rounds over to the core worlds. So for every two rounds there's one sector card, so for round one and two we'll play sector one and then round three we'll play sector two. And we have a round marker here for the first round. And finally, since I want to show you the pre-game pre -game draft rules, I've put six cards into the middle. Um, they basically come from the sector zero deck, which is the pre-game draft deck. Um, six cards because um, that's the amount of cards you choose for two players. And what will happen now, that from each of their decks, the players will remove one snap fighter and one galactic runs from the game and replace them with two cards that they draft. And this works that the starting player gets to pick a card first and let's just say that he really likes this troop transport over here. Then the second player gets to pick two cards in a row and yeah, let's say he's really into spaceships so he gets these two starfighters. And then the, last, uh, the first player can get the last card and yeah, sticking with infantry cards, he takes the jump troopers. Okay, so this was basically the pre-game draft. What's left to do now is to put these cards back into the box and put the drafted cards into the player decks, shuffle them, and then be ready to start the game. I'll do that now, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we started with the first turn of the game. If When we look down here at the phase summary, first it's the draw phase, meaning that every player will draw back to six cards. I've already done that. So here are the cards for the second player, and here are the cards for the first player. Next is the energy phase, which means that we take a look at the energy production of each player's world and adjust the energy track accordingly. So I get three energy here, and the other player will also get three energy. Then, starting with the first player, uh, players can use energy surges. There's a tactic card called Energy Surge, 
and it says during the energy phase, if at least one player's vault generate more energy than yours, generate plus two energy, otherwise generate plus one energy. So no players and um, vaults are creating more energy than I am. So if I just cut it, I get at least one energy. So I do that now. Also on my home world, there's a special ability which says during the energy phase you may discard two cards from your hand to generate plus one energy. So I will discard another two cards to get another energy to five. And also the other player does exactly the same thing. So we have an energy surge card and we discard two cards for another two energy. Okay, so next is the galactic phase. In the galactic phase we turn up cards from the galactic decks. Since we're in round one, it'll be from the sector one deck. And for two players we will turn up six cards. Next, we will have to check whether there are at least as many world cards as their players. There are four, we're two players, so that's fine. And after that, we'll have to check whether there are enough non-world cards. And that's also the case, so we don't flo flip over any more cards. Now we're coming to the action phase, where each player performs actions one after the other. And for our first action, we want to make a deploy action, so we can deploy X units. This will cost one action per, um, per unit and the appropriate costs. So looking at my cards, I would actually like to deploy these two cards. So that's two actions for two cards and three energy altogether. So what I will do, I will put them in my war zone. I will pay two actions and three energy. Okay, then it's the other player's turn and he does something similar. So basically, we pull into cards, paying two actions, and paying three energy. Then it's my action again. So what I would like to do now is invade a world. This will cost me one action and one energy. So Looking at what I have here, I have a total of two ground strength and one fleet strength. So this would match up with either of these two worlds. And I think I'll try to conquer that one. Or rather, I will conquer it. So I will put it in my war zone. But now I have to discard both cards. However, on the troop transport it says after an invasion in which you use the troop transport, you may re retain one infantry unit used to conquer the planet. So basically, only my troop transport will be discarded, while I still have the jump troopers. And of course, this cost me an action and an energy. So the other player, again, does something similar. And right now, he only has one fleet strength and one ground strength, so things don't look too good, but if we take a look on the experimental prototype, it says, at the start of an invasion, you may flip the top card of your draw deck onto your discard pile at the card's energy cost to the prototype's fleet strength. So, hoping to get at least one more fleet strength, the player decides to go for this planet over here. So let's see what happens. We flip over a card. It has an energy cost of 1. It goes over to the discard pile, meaning that we now have 2 fleet strength and 1 ground strength, which means we can conquer this planet. Now, 
both cards need to be discarded, so we discard the Starfighter. However, if you use a Galactic Grunt to conquer a planet, you can have him actually colonize that planet. So we'll just move him under here. He is still considered part of our empire, not part of our war zone. And we got rid of him, basically thinning out our deck. And again, of course, this cost him one action and one energy. Now it's back to the first player. We still have one energy left. So, looking at these cards in here, um, let's say we want to draft a card. Drafting a card means it costs one action and the unit's draft cost, so we pay an action. And, yeah, for example, the draft cost of this tactic card is one, which we have, so we will draft it into our discard pile and pay our last energy. For the other player, he has one energy left, however, he doesn't have enough strength to conquer something. This card costs two to draft, but, however, he still has a card in his hand, which costs one to deploy. So, he uses his last action and energy to deploy the Recon Fighter. So that's the action phase. Now, when we take a look what comes next, next is the discard phase, in which we, in which we would basically discard the rest of our hands, uh, but we can choose to keep one card. The second player doesn't have any cards any longer, so he doesn't have to do anything. And the first player decides to actually keep the Prince Aaron card, so that's also done. Also, what would happen if you had any energy left, you would discard it, but both players have zero energy. And finally we get to the end phase, where we will give the destiny marker to the next player, move ahead the round marker to the next round, notify the number of actions, it's still 4, adjust the action counter appropriately, and we're ready to start the next round. Okay, so we're ready to start the second round. Both players have drawn back up to six cards. This meant that the second player drew six cards and the first player drew five cards because he retained the hero in his hand. Okay, that was draw phase. So in the energy phase, this player here actually generates four energy from his world. And he also has again an energy search card that he can discard. So. That's an additional energy for 5. He chooses not to use his homeworld's ability to discard cards for further energy. The other player also has 4 energy with his rules. He has an energy search card that he can discard. And he wants to use the special ability of his homeworld. So he discards another 2 cards. giving him 6 energy altogether. Okay, then we're in the galactic phase. We have to turn over cards, though there are at least 6 cards in here, so that'll mean 3 cards for now. Sorry, before we do that. First, the cards that are already here will get an energy token. This is basically like in Puerto Rico or Twilight Imperium. Whenever you draft or conquer these cards now, you will actually get one energy back. And it also marks these cards because next round, those still left here with an energy token will be removed from the game. So basically every card stays in the galactic zone for two turns. The one that appears, another one where it's discounted, and after that it's gone. That being said, that's now Turn over another three cards. Okay, so the second player goes first, and what he would like to do is make a deploy action. So he wants to deploy these two snap fighters. That's two actions and two energy. And 
and they go into a sports hall. Another player over here also wants to deploy two snap fighters. So again to energy and to actions. Then the player over here, looking at his fleet strength, realizes he has three fleet strengths. And there is one planet that is he, that he's able to conquer with only two fleet strengths, so he wants to do that. Um, he pays an action, and he pays an energy, but since we know that it'll, it'll succeed and he'll also get an energy here, let's just leave the energy at four, and he conquers this world into his, into his war zone. So these two cards would be discarded normally, but again one is discarded and the other one can go under here. So for this player this is a little bad because he was actually trying to do something along these lines as well. Looking here we see that he has a fleet strength of three but only one ground strength. And sadly, that doesn't match up with anything because all the words left have at least a ground strength of two. So what you can actually do now is draft a card from the um, galactic zone. So this hero would cost two energy. So what you will do is pay an action. And it's a two energy only one because you will get an energy back. So it's removed. And this card goes into his discard pile. Okay, then finally, the second player has one last action and lots of energy. He can't do an invasion anymore, so he will pay one action and one energy to draft the Starfighter. Okay, and then back to our player here. He still has two energy left and also one action. So he decides to deploy his hero Prince Aaron, which will cost him the last action and the last two energy that he has. Okay, that being done, we move into the discard phase. So what happens? This player has to decide to remove it, to discard one card. He decides to keep the Medibot and discard the Snap Fighter. The other player only has one card, so he decides to keep that one. And what he also needs to do is discard his remi remaining amount of energy, which is a little sad, because then he could have maybe made things better. And finally, for the end phase, the Destiny Marker moves over again. We're going into the third round, meaning that we'll take cards from the second sector now, and also each player will now get five actions. So we adjust this accordingly. And we're done with this round. What will happen now in the draw phase, since each player has... okay, this player has five cards left, so we'll actually draw them and that's it. Well, this player probably has not enough cards left, so he, what he will do, as in any deck building game, shuffle the discard pile into the draw pile. Sorry, once the draw pile runs out, he will shuffle his discard pile, making a new draw pile out of it. Okay, so the third round. In the draw phase, both players drew back up to six cards. The first player didn't have to reshuffle the discard pile but the second player had to. Now in the draw phase, since the second player is not particularly happy with the cards he got, he decides to invoke the special ability on the Recon Fighter. During the draw phase you may discard the Starfighter from your war zone to draw the top five cards from your deck and then discard four of them. Okay, so what he does, he discards the, Scar um, the Recon Fighter, he draws five cards, takes a look at them, 
decides he wants to keep this one and discards the other four. In the energy phase, um, this player generates four energy from his bolts, and the second player generates five energy from his bolts. So, um, the second player has an energy search card to play, so that's another energy. And he also decides to invoke the special ability of his homeworld, discarding another two cards for a seventh energy. And the first player also decides to discard two cards. or a fifth energy. Okay, so then the galactic phase. We have one card here that already has an energy token on it, meaning that the token gets discarded and this card is removed from the game. Then there are two cards already here, which means that they both get an energy token. And now we will reveal four more cards from the Sector 2 deck. Okay, so these are four non-world cards, which, mean, which means we don't need additional cards, because we have two world cards and at least two non-world cards. Okay, actions. So the first player sees that he doesn't have enough ground strength to invade any of the worlds here. So he decides that something needs to be done about that and he decides to deploy two units one midibot and a galactic grunt costing two actions and two energy the other player has no units left seeing that he has a lot of energy he decides to deploy some troops first and he would really like to deploy two starfighters for a total cost of three and two actions so two actions and three energy now the first player has actually enough strength to conquer any of these worlds, so he's going for the big one. And he needs two fleet strength and two ground strength. So, using the jump troopers, period 1-1, one, one. has snap fighter, that's 2-1 altogether, and has galactic grunt, meaning that we have reached 2-2. Two, two. So he can pay the actions cost, he could pay the energy cost, but again, he's an energy token on there, so that would basically be immediately refunded. Those cards would now need to go, or rather we can put a galactic grunt under the world to colonize it. The snap fighter is discarded, and normally the jump troopers would need to be discarded as well, but on the medibot it says that after invasion you may retain any one infantry or starfighter used to conquer the planet. You must then discard the medibot. Okay, so we discard the medibot, but we get to keep our jump troopers. And of course, this Baltasar planet goes in our war zone. So, this player has quite some actions left. The problem is, he can't conquer anything. So looking at the cards that we have, he decides that the smugglers will actually be rather nice and they have a draft cost of two. So he drafts them to his discard pile, pays two energy, 
and an action. Going back here, this player decides that he also wants to draft something. And since he has a lot of fleet strength, and this probably won't change too much, and no real ground strength, he decides to take this double feint tactics card for a draft cost of two. So he's down to one energy and down to one action. The other player still has some energy left, so again he decides to draft one of the cards and he's going for the Plasma Skimmer. So this is his last two energy and his second to last action. And finally this player, he has only tactics cards in his hands, so that won't do him any good. He doesn't have enough energy left to draft something, so what he actually do is pass. So he removes his last energy and his last action, because when you pass, you lose all of your actions and all of your energy. And yeah, then the second player passes as well. Now, in the discard phase, this player decides to keep on to the coordinated assault card, but discard the other one. And this player here just discards this card. And in the end phase, the destiny marker switches and we move to round four. And again, we give each player back his five actions. Okay, so we're back for the fourth round. Uh, draw phase has already happened. In the energy phase, this player generates five energy. However, on this planet it says that Balthazar generates one energy for each hero in, the, in your war zone. And we have a hero over here, so that's actually six energy. And the second player generates five energy. Okay, the first player would like to play an energy surge, but he had more energy than the other player, so for discarding it, he only gets an additional energy for seven. And he also wants to use his homeworld's ability to discard two cards for an additional energy, so he's at eight. And the other player would also like to discard two cards for an energy, and here we go. The galactic phase. First, this one gets discarded, since it has a token on it. The flame troopers get a token, and then we reveal five cards, or at least five cards from the other deck, so we have a world, we have a second world, so there are enough worlds, and have a couple of more non-world cards. So the second player is starting, right now he can't actually conquer anything, which means that he'll tries to take something from the middle and here we have a very nice tactics card for just two energy so he drafts that one here is his card pile two energy and an action then our player over here he decides he wants to deploy some units namely those two which will cost him two energy and two actions first player or the second player who is the starting player he also decides to want he wants to deploy something to starfighters no sorry starfighter in the infantry so that's three energy altogether and another two actions
and over here. This player wants to make an invasion and he's actually looking out to get this planet here and for that he needs two fleet strength and a ground strength meaning he will use the jump troopers and the snap fighters which is two and one altogether the snap fighters can colonize the world and normally the jump troopers would be discarded but again we use the medieval bot to prevent that And of course, invading costs us an action and an energy. Okay, then over here, we actually forgot something a little earlier, because on the Sentinel it says when you deploy the Sentinel, you may immediately draw one card. So we'll actually draw another card here. And then this player would like to conquer something, namely this world over here. So for three fleet strength and one ground strength he will need a galactic grunt, the sentinel, and a snap fighter. So the snap fighter can again colonize the newly conquered world. Those two go to the discard pile. And of course, I am keeping forgetting this. This will cost an energy and an action. Okay, going back here. We still have a lot of energy left. So, why not try and draft something? So, this plasma skimmer looks nice goes to the discard pile, costs an action and two energy. The second player has an action left but no energy. So this is actually not so good. So we just pass, do nothing with the last action. And now we get back here and having lots of energy left we can still draft something, namely the claw fighter using up two of our last energy and our last action. And in the discard phase we just kind of to keep the native alliance because that will boost our ground strength later on, which we don't have so much of. And looking at the cards that the second player has, it's probably best if he keeps his recon fighter and the other cards go away. Okay. Then in the end phase, of course, the destiny mark goes back and we advance into the fifth round and the third sector. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I certainly did. And I hope you, I could show you how, yeah, how to play the game and how it plays like. And yeah, maybe until next time. Bye bye.